quick note before we get into what I want to say today. Of course, this passage is used a lot by our Protestant brothers and sisters to say Mary had other kids. She didn't. <laughs> what we see very clearly is, in, in if you're reading the original languages, brothers and sisters is more widely experienced, right? So we even know that one of these is James, who's one of the 12 apostles, who is the cousin of the Lord, right? So we know very clearly in this case, brothers being used to mean cousin. So they are his relatives, but they are not his blood brothers and sisters. So just to clarify that, because Mary is a perpetual virgin, we know that to be true. And so we have to interpret everything in light of what we know to be true, right? And so that's what the church is always constantly taught. Now looking at today, uh, today's saint is really key for us as a parish, but also as a nation right now. St. Peter Julian Iamard, he was born in the 1800s and he died uh, in 1868. He founded as a priest, the Congregation of the Blessed Sacrament which is devoted to the worship and the apostolate of the Eucharist as the center of the life of the church and society. Then he founded uh, Servants of the Blessed Sacrament, which is a contemplative women's community to do this. And then he founded a Eucharistic fraternity for the laity and an association of priest adorers, right? So he was, his whole life was about the Eucharist. He recognized what this is and who this is. And so therefore his entire life was about trying to wake people up and say, look who's here, look what this is, this is remarkable. And in fact, he actually founded Eucharistic Congresses. Didn't we just have a Eucharistic Congress? So that was started by him in the 1800s. And so we recognize that the idea of getting a big collaboration of just a bunch of Catholics getting together and celebrating the Most Holy Eucharist in a Congress, that was Peter Julian Imard's idea, right? So he's very, very prominent. I wanted to look up some things. I did not get to it this morning, so you'll have to look him up. He has some beautiful things to say about the Blessed Sacrament, but I wanna focus more about just this idea of focusing on what we know to be true. When we know who this is here in our church, it impacts everything that we do. It impacts our life. And this is in fact what the scriptures providentially are talking about today. And what happens when we lose track of it, when we lose track of who this is, then things go bad. This is what happens. Jerusalem was the holy city, wasn't it? Why was it holy? Who lived there? God. Right? There was the temple and that was the place where God came down to earth and his presence, his glory rested on the Ark of the Covenant. So Jerusalem was God's city, right? Because the temple was there. But what happens is, is that over time, it's like, oh yeah, God shows up, ah, boring, you know? We get used to it. And that's what was happening. They're getting used to it and they're going back and they're committing sin and they're doing things they used to do before. And Jeremiah, through, as God's mouthpiece, is telling them, you better wake up because if you just are resting on the fact of, oh, we have the house of the Lord in our city and you think nothing will happen if you keep sinning, you're wrong. God is very patient, but eventually he's gonna wipe you out if you don't. And I will make this city like Shiloh, which was a really bad place, right? And so it's kind of like Eugene. I'll make this place like Eugene. No, no, just kidding. No. <laughs> right, as an insult to you, right? I will make this place as an insult and a curse word, right? The place that was the house of the Lord, if we don't keep it as the house of the Lord, we will lose the Lord, right? So it's very clear that that's what happened. In fact, they didn't listen to Jeremiah and they were exiled to Babylon and then they completely wiped out the temple, right? And has never been rebuilt to this day. You know, the Wailing Wall, where there's just one part of the foundation that's left. So we recognize that, that, that it, is, it is a warning to us, as Jesus even said many times, right? There will not be one stone left upon another because of the wickedness of the people, right? And we see that that's a message to us. And then he says, familiarity breeds contempt. And so he goes to his own house, his own town, and they're like, oh, Jesus, who's this guy? Like, we grew up with him. He can't be the Messiah. He's too ordinary, right? And it's like, he's the living God. We've been seeing all these miracles that are happening, but because I know him, right? I'm too familiar with him. I don't respect him anymore. And that's what can happen to us as Catholics, can't it? We come to church we handle things, and even as a priest, even more scandalously or dangerously, because I handle these things every day, it is very easy to become desensitized to what we're doing. And if we do that, friends, it's, it's a really scary place to be because then we're not impacted by the miracle of God that he's come down to live among us. Emmanuel, God with us, he's living right here, right? And in fact, more incredibly more shocking, and this is the thing we're most comfortable with, is the fact that you are the temple of God and God lives in you. How and why? When did that happen? Baptism. In your baptism, 
God chose to dwell in you as a temple and make you a holy city. And so we have to ask the question, am I living like that? Or have I made my house like Shiloh? Because that's what some of us do with our lives. And so that's why we have confession when we wake up and realize, oh my gosh, I need to turn to the Lord. So if we repent, that's what Jeremiah says, right? Right? If they, maybe they will repent and turn back, that I will repent of the evil that will come upon them, right? So we have to recognize that. Today we've got two beautiful young ladies who are celebrating their birthdays today. So Alexa and, and, uh, and Allie, yes, sorry, Amy, sorry, Amy, yes, Alexa and Amy. And so Alexa's celebrating her 15th birthday, her quinceanera. And so in Latin American culture, the quinceanera is saying, now I am an adult woman, right? So the fact is, is that what she's doing today is very beautiful. We present ourselves here to the church for a blessing and to consecrate ourselves to Our Lady, right? And her cousin Amy's turning 17 and so celebrating her actual birthday today. And so they're both receiving a birthday blessing and giving their femininity, giving their bodies, giving their lives to our Lord through our Immaculate Mother so they can live as authentic women pure and chaste and holy in this world. What a beautiful thing, right? That we need this. It's a reminder of their baptism. When they were baptized, they were babies, right? And they didn't choose this for themselves. So now they're saying, I wish to live as a temple of God, right? It's beautiful that we have these kind of moments in our life where we make choices to say, I want to live this way. And so the church blesses that desire that they have to live for God, right? And recognize we all need the blessing of God to live this way, don't we? So let's pray today through the intercession of St. Peter, Julian, Imard, that we would never lose our fire. We would never lose our zeal. We're a perpetual adoration parish, and that's, we need prayer to keep that going. We need people to be zealous for this and not to become comfortable. The fact that we're doing this is a miracle, right? And so we need to keep that before our eyes and keep it here so we don't become, oh, adoration, what, you know, this is just what we do. No, this is God living among us, and it's so remarkable, and how can we not pour out our whole lives in thanksgiving? So let's pray today for each one of us. Let's pray for these girls. Let's pray for our families that each one of us, the baptized, would live as temples of the Lord and we would not be like, shy, like, like the temple that was destroyed in Jerusalem, but may we be like the heavenly Jerusalem that will not ever end. St. Peter, Julian, Imard, pray for us. our petitions to Almighty God and pray for the church throughout the world that she would be holy and blameless and without blemish. We pray to the Lord. Lord. We pray for all Christians throughout the world.